Hey guys, Ryan here. Thank you for joining me for a new video. This is part six of my Amazon Merch mini series. In this one, I'm gonna walk you through design best practices because it's one thing to design for the internet. You know, I'm thinking along the lines of like graphic design and doing t-shirt mock-ups that look great when we export the finished uh, mock-up from Photoshop or from our graphic design software, but it is another thing to translate those designs into print, into actually wearing them on a t-shirt in real life. So what this video is gonna cover is what considerations you need to make when you're doing your graphic design. It's gonna cover some examples of how things may look great in the digital mockups, but it doesn't necessarily translate when the shirt is finished and the, the finished product is created and sent to the customer. And the ultimate goal is to keep our customers happy and reduce returns. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go jump on my computer and we can get started. This is gonna be a really valuable video regardless of where you're selling your print-on-demand products because understanding how these graphics translate into real products is paramount in reducing return rates and keeping customers happy. So again, this is part six of my Amazon Merch mini series. It is design best practices straight out of the Amazon Merch resources page. Real quick before we start, let me introduce myself for the new viewers. I'm Ryan Hogue. I've sold over $1.7 million on Amazon to date. A quarter million came through Amazon Merch. If you wanna follow links in the description, I've got a free seven day Amazon Merch mini course to help you learn the ropes. I've also got an Amazon Merch Facebook group. I'd love to have you there, lots of lively discussion every day. And if you didn't know, I publish income reports on the first or second day of each month. You can follow my journey as an Amazon Merch seller, as an FBA seller, KDP seller. I even publish my YouTube revenue. So if you wanna be notified, all you have to do is subscribe to my channel and YouTube will let you know when I drop those videos. Last but not least, I wrote a full Amazon Merch course that teaches you everything I learned over the last three and a half years, going from tier 10 to tier 20,000. If you'd like to check that out, there's a link in the description. All right, let's get into some best practices for Amazon Merch. By the way, the uh, resource that I'm reading from, well, that I'm referencing, let's say, uh, is on the Amazon Merch seller resources page it's packed with value i know it's easy to want to skip past it and just get straight to designing and uploading but uh doing this stuff it honestly it pays dividends down the line so let's go through it all right so first thing i actually took this from the bottom of the resource and i put it at the top of my presentation because this is pretty much summarizes what we're going to be going through so the do's and don'ts do create designs that work with the products in terms of placement color and size now again as we go through this, I'm gonna give you my own personal opinions and commentary. For now, I'm just gonna read through the do's and don'ts though. Do double check for misspellings in your artwork as well as in your product descriptions. Avoid elements and fonts that subtly blend into the product color. These can either blend in completely and not be visible on the product or print a halo with a hard edge. By the way, we've got examples of all this. Do refer to the artwork tips above when including elements with a transparency less than 20%. These may not print as expected. And when it says above, that actually means what's gonna follow this. Do be aware of what content is allowable and what is not and how this differs for each marketplace. For information on allowable content, read the content policy. So those of you guys that have been following my Amazon Merch mini series on YouTube, you already know the content policy, but if you are just jumping in, make sure to go backwards and watch the video on the content policy because that one, can save your Amazon Merch account from being terminated from too many rejections. It is extremely important. I think I actually labeled that video in all caps. Watch this before starting on Amazon Merch. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure I did. Actually, I have it over here. Uh, yeah, I did. I, it's, it's all caps. Watch this before starting. All right, don't. Do not create artwork or product descriptions with misleading information. And then you'll see it says neon, glitter, glow in the dark, which is which will not print as intended and will mislead customers. Chances are, if you put those words in right here, you'll get a rejection very quickly. An automated rejection, by the way. Don't use words or sentences that describe the product, shipping promises, sizing, print quality, print effect. Again, those are also trigger words that will result in rejections. Don't submit designs that pertain to accidents, natural disasters, and shootings. Again, they say read the content policy. So go ahead, go back in time, watch that video I published on the content policy, and thank me later for thank me later for the rejections you don't get. <laughs> also, stay tuned. By the way, I'm uh, 
very soon in the near future, maybe with the release of this video, I'm not 100% sure, but my buddy and I just released a uh, old Chrome extension. It's literally the exact same thing that this old Chrome extension used to do. It used to be called Merch Security, and all it did was it helped you, it helped notify you if you type a bad word or a trigger word while you're doing your uh, keywords in a merch listing, if you're doing your title, brand, description, bullets, etc. So we basically just remade the Chrome extension since whoever made the old one hasn't been maintaining it. So I will let you guys know. Stay tuned. If you're not subscribed, subscribe, and I will let you know uh, ASAP as soon as that's out there. We're, we're beta testing right now. It, it technically is out. but All right, artwork tips. For best results, please use one of the design templates to make your products. So they do actually provide templates. However, I don't think that's really necessary. I mean, they probably complicate because it's only helping beginners, but it's probably going to complicate things for beginners more than it helps, in my opinion. Artwork specifications to ensure your final artwork will upload to the portal smoothly. Follow these guidelines. Create your final work in RGB, red, green, blue. This will produce a greater range of colors when printed on different products. Now, in Photoshop, all you have to do is go to File Image. Oh, sorry. I'm jumping the gun here. I'm coming back to RGB in, the, in a second. Sorry. Pretend that didn't happen. All right. Output your artwork file at 100% of the print dimensions at 300 DPI. That's what I wanted to show you really quickly. So go to, um, this is just Photoshop. That's my graphic design software of choice. I've just been using it for so long. So open your file up, go to image, uh, file image, and then width should be whatever dimensions actually. It doesn't matter. Um, the DPI can be set independent of that. But where it says resolution, make sure it says 300 and then pixels uh, per inch. All right, make sure your artwork file is no larger than 25 megabytes. If you're using Photoshop, you can choose smallest file size in the PNG format options dialog to reduce the final artwork file size. So you don't typically want to go there. Um, it's easier when you export JPEGs because you can literally, there's like a little quality slider and you can just adjust that as needed. But with uh, PNGs, I mean, that is an option when you're in most graphic design softwares, but that's going to reduce the... Um, the color depth so it's, it's probably reduced the well it will reduce the quality if you have to i mean if you're creating designs that are greater than 25 megabytes that's that's a big design so you probably have like a real life photo in there or something all right keep in mind many products share the same artwork file but will have different print size and locations based on the product and garment size that is true however i will again i'll provide commentary as we go through this um, I like it better when there's examples before I start talking. There's actually better examples of that down the line. So I'm waiting to waiting to elaborate on that. All right. Artwork sizing and placement for apparel products. While you can certainly use the entire 15 inch width, often customers find that to be overwhelming in general, keeping your maximum dimensions to 12 inches or less in results in better centering on the garments. Now really quickly, actually, no, I'm coming back to this, but just keep that in mind. They say, do not use the full range of the, uh, of the design canvas that's available. The portion of the shirt that is available for your designs, they're suggesting don't use all of it. They're saying use about uh, 12 divided by 15. They're saying use about 80% of it. All right, be conscious of the placement of design elements and where they would appear in relation to your customer's anatomy. Remember that designs are printed on men's, women's, and kids' products. So they said <laughs> in relation to customer's anatomy. I think that's in relation to women's products since every piece of apparel is a top. So I'm just saying, I think that's what they're referencing. Horizontally centered designs visually as well as mathematically. Heavy design elements on one side can make a design feel off balance even if it's mathematically centered. Good advice. All right, for apparel, designs typically do the best when they're placed near the top of the print area. For pop sockets, center designs across the whole area. So again, rather than putting a design like towards the middle or the bottom of the uh, canvas, I don't know what to call it, the designable printable canvas, let's call it the printable canvas, you know, put it at the top, like the one you see here. All right, defining transparency, what you see on screen may not be what's printed. I repeat, what you see on screen may not be what's printed. Keep that in mind. Uh, you can always do test orders, by the way. On screen, when lowering the opacity of elements within your design, the underlying artwork becomes visible. During printing, a white underbase is printed on darker color products under the artwork and may cause undesired results with transparencies. So I typically never use transparencies in my designs. It's just, I I don't know. There's too many potential problems. I mean, the, here's the thing. With Amazon Merch, if there's a return, we just see the royalty debited out of our account. So it's it's like we at, we're at net zero, right? 
we're not getting charged it from our own personal money. But if you're running like the Printful integration to Etsy or, you know, Printful to Amazon and you get a return, you're eating the full return costs. So it's a lot more important there. So this is just good best practices to follow. All right, print true black. CMYK is the most common color spacing for printing. However, we require that all art files to be created in an RGB space. The richest black you can achieve is R0G0B0 or hex code 000000. As a web developer, by the way, I have a lot of hex codes memorized. It's not something I'm proud of, but that's how I uh that's how we prefer to decide to determine colors on web pages. I know nobody cared, but I had to say that. You can accomplish this by using the software's color picker or by manually entering in the color build. So essentially, if you come into Photoshop again, go to image mode, RGB color, and uh, from there you should be restricted to RGB colors. All right, artwork resolution. When designing your artwork, create the files at 100% of the print dimensions at 300 DPI. This will ensure a sharp image that isn't blurry or pixelated. Your image should remain sharp or even when your artwork elements are sized down for printing. Remember to not scale up artwork unless it's a vector file, as this will also cause pixelation. So if you go and you steal some really tiny graphic and then you scale it up in Photoshop like it lets you, it will approximate how things are supposed to look, but it's also it's ultimately just going to result in pixelation. If you have a vector file, on the other hand, um, a common format of vector files would be like AI or SVG then you can typically, that means they're resolution independent, which means you can scale them up infinitely and scale them down infinitely because instead of it being a bitmap image where it's rows and columns of pixels, it is mathematical formulas that are actually resulting in the uh, lines that we see rendered by whatever application we're looking at to view them. The reason I know all this is because it's part of the web development course I teach at a local university for the last six years. All right, choosing colors. Water-based inks are used in direct-to-garment printing, also known as DTG, the acronym. And the ink colors, CMYK, are translucent. On darker colors, a white ink base is printed first, and then the colors added on top. This is key to seeing the colors on dark garments. So they mentioned that earlier, but, you know, I've never operated a uh, printer, so I didn't know that. And it actually is pretty interesting that this is how they go about doing it. Keep in mind very subtle color differences between colors in your artwork and the base color of the product, for example, dark gray design on a black t-shirt may not print as expected. Typically RGB screen colors appear more vibrant on screen than CMYK colors printed on products. So as you can see here, we have a heather blue t-shirt on screen view and then the printed outcome on the same heather blue t-shirt. So what they're saying is this is not a perfect science. So if you wanna do a blue design on a blue shirt, Eh, maybe skip it. All right, here's dark heather sweatshirt on screen on the left side and then the printed outcome behind me. No bueno, that's going to result in a return. There you've got a lemon t-shirt on screen on the left and then the printed outcome behind me. Uh, again, not great. So remember, customers are buying what they see based on the image on the screen, which is not a real life photo. It is a CGI mock-up, which is print on demand. That's what allows us to do it on demand. Um, they may think that the actual printed product is a mistake leading to bad reviews and returns. All right, let's get into uh, text real quick. So printing text and lines. Recommendations for type and line weights will differ based on what it is printed on. By the way, my opinion, the bigger, the bolder, the better is pretty much my general advice. But the following images are recommendations based on the type of materials. These should be used as general guidelines for how to design your artwork to print as expected. Keep in mind the artwork will always look cleaner and crisper on screen in comparison to the printed version. So lightweight fabrics, F-A-B-R-I-T-S, fabrics. That's news to me. I don't know what that word means, but it says t-shirts, tank tops, etc. The recommended minimum font size is 32 point and minimum line weight is 2 point as shown in the examples below. So 32 point size text, granted, depending on the font family used, that may or may not render, like different font families render bigger, smaller, et cetera. Um, and then the font weight two point as a bare minimum, um, that's that's pretty small. That's like the thickness of the, the strokes. Uh, and those fonts they were showing were Helvetica. So if you're wondering what this font is. And if you want to know how to do that in Photoshop, again, right in the, the top bar in the middle of your screen, when you have text selected, you can click that drop down and pre-select or just manually key in what font size you would like. 
All right, so here are some more. Actually, it's the same example, except it's Georgia font. Uh, and then the printed outcome behind me. And again, they're just getting smaller. You see like the big font at the very top, and then it just gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And you can see the uh, quality that it resulted in. Again, I wouldn't even come close to printing this small. This is just from the Amazon Merch resource. They did the tests for us, so we didn't need to uh, order samples with really small fonts. And here's Helvetica again. And here's Georgia again. All right, pop sockets. Uh, the recommended minimum font size is 24 point and minimum line weight is two point. So here's pop socket reference. If you have questions on how your artwork will print, they recommend creating a sample order. Product tips. In general, the print area on the front of garments starts one and a half inches down from the bottom of the collar on the front and three inches down from the collar on the back. The garments, with exception of this, are the men's raglan baseball tee, which starts two and a half inches down from the bottom of the front uh, front collar. So instead of reading you all these things, just know if it's bothering you, the re it's here in the merch resource. But one thing I'd like to say is when I was starting on merch back in the day, right? Back, back when I was in tier 10, tier 25, tier 100, tier 500 even, I would re-render designs differently for a men's shirt and a woman's shirt which is crazy because then you're using two uploads on the same design, et cetera. But I thought that, I mean, and you, I'm sure you've probably noticed if you if you have been manually uploading and and you've done like a woman's only, because I think the default, it just shows the men's size. But if you select women's and you see the woman mock-up and how the design is placed, it, it almost like pushes it down a little bit further and doesn't look as great. So what I used to do would be like size my, desi my designs down a little bit and put them towards the top. And uh, I, I don't think that's worth your time and as a general tip when it comes to designing for t-shirts that are for sale on the web, I think your design should be big. So I don't wanna size anything down and shift them around and use two upload slots for the same design on the same product just based on men's fit versus women's fit. I don't think it's worth it. I'm just saying that at the time when I was learning the ropes, that's what I would do. <laughs> Looking back, I'm, I'm just saying I, I don't think it was worth it. I don't think that's great, that's good advice. All right, so you got the raglan. They're showing the um, front and the back here. And then also I just wanted to, uh, real quick before we wrap up, elaborate on my advice from a second ago where I said, I don't think you should downsize designs. I think you should make designs big, bold, make, make text big and bold. Here's why. I don't want you to just trust my opinion blindly. The reason I feel this way, I feel like there's some data to support it, uh, well, aside from merch also, I think they tell us somewhere in the resources, I swear I read it, that like the bigger, bolder designs do do well. Although we did see at the start of this presentation, they said, hey, if the design canvas is 15 inches wide, use 12 inches. Well, let me show you one of the top Amazon merch brands, if not the top Amazon merch brand. All right, L-I-Q-U-E. By the way, my search merch tool is free to use. I'll put a link in the description if you wanna check it out. All it is is a web page on my website where you type in some keywords and then you search by product type. So I typed in L-I-Q-U-E, leak, and then I hit search t-shirts. And look what I found. So this is one of the top Amazon merch sellers and all of their designs in any of their niches are almost always like this. What do you notice about that design? They're designing to be clicked in search results, even if that's gonna look way too big and ridiculous in real life when it's printed, which it may, may not. Again, that's subjective, it's opinion. But these guys get clicks, they get sales, they dominate Amazon merch to the tune of definitely seven figures annually, for sure. If you just install DS Amazon QuickView and look at the bestseller ranks of some of their top products, I mean, it's crazy. But, you know, when in doubt, just learn from the people who are doing it better than you. So Leak always has big, bold designs. That's why I'm saying even if the Amazon merch resource says size them down, it'll look better when it's printed. In some cases, you also need to reverse engineer your end goal, which is to make sales. And I think you'll make more sales by studying the top brands like Leak and making bigger designs as big as possible, basically. All right, next time in part seven, we are gonna dive into niche research using some popular Amazon merch niche research tools. By the way, even if I'm doing print on demand for off of Amazon merch, I always come back to Amazon because that is the number one e-commerce website in the world. It's where the most customers are. To me, that's the best indicator of what's selling. So yeah. Everything that I show you in the next one's gonna be very valuable. Look forward to that one. If you're not subscribed, definitely hit that button so that you're notified when I drop that video. Also, if you want YouTube to tell you when I drop videos, hit the little bell icon that pops up after you subscribe. Also, 
if you don't mind hit that like button let the youtube algorithm know that this video is uh is worthwhile that it had some value in it and uh thank you so much for watching guys i'll see you at the next one passive income school is open enroll now at riotsmethod.com thank you